Greetings everyone, Yona Sev and I welcome you all in the seventh episode of the Power Platform Community Tool Series. In this episode, we are going to talk about another important plugin or tool available in the XRM toolbox, which is a bulk data updater. If you have not watched the previous episodes, please check the complete playlist or links in the description of this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel to get the notification on the new updates. Bulk data updater or BDO enable user to effectively update one or multiple column across the single record or a large data in the Microsoft Dataverse. The versatile tool empower users to trigger Microsoft automation workflows, plugins, and other processes. With BGU, you can perform bulk updates, set calculated values, delete records, assign ownership, and manage records states between based on the specific filters. Additionally, BDU supports value calculation using XRM tokens and integrates seamlessly with Microsoft Power FX. Max and Mia, co-worker in Contoso, are back now. Max asked to Mia that I want to update the large data set from the Dataverse. What is your recommendation? Mia gave him a tip to use the bulk data updater and asked him to follow up the demo by Jonas, who will now explain how easy it is to use it. Over to you, Jonas. Okay, thank you. So what is the bulk data updater? Well, let me just start it. It's Lord of it's here, bulk data updater. You can update everything, you can delete stuff, and you can do a lot more than you can through the user interface that we have in the Power Platform. So if I open this, it starts with nothing. And actually to show you what I want to do, why I should update anything. Well, let me just using this up open maker so you can get there all already and i've created a new field on account i have the we trust them it's a bool so we can say yes we trust them or no we don't uh, so how do we sort of set this because if you're looking at this we see that it has the default value that's no you cannot have this without a default but when we have created this attribute the field uh, after you actually have the data in there, well, then it is will not be uh, one or yes or no, but it's null. So we have to do that in some way. So let's start you with just getting the easiest way to get to the data to to then update is to open a view from Dynamics or from the Power Platform, and then I can just select from which uh, table and just put like active accounts. So we see these records here already. But what I want to do is also, I want to look at this new field. It's not available in the view. So how should I actually add that field as well? So we can see what it has is having today. I could do this, just go to raw fetch XML and write it here. If I think that's funny, uh, it's not fun, of course. Uh, we can actually open it from a file. We have an XML file with the fetch XML, but I'll just go to the fetch XML builder. So it integrated between these tools. So I do this like this. Now we have, this is the query we had from the bulk data updater was sent to the fetch XML builder. And here I can just, uh, well, I can actually remove the link entity there. Just click delete because we don't need that and not even the account, but we, we want to add these new field. So I'll just add, if, add it here and if we trust them and I can just uh, execute it. Well, it's not there. It's nothing there, it's null in everything, but now we have it included in the query. So, okay, how do we do this? I so just remove this from before and we add want to add data. So we have like a default value to all of these. Then I add the attribute I want to update. We can see which we see here. By default, it will show the, the attributes that are included in the query. But we can also change that as well. We can set, well, show also all fields that are on the form and all that are in the view. And we can actually select just uh, show everything. Usually this makes it a lot easier to just use what we have in the query for the data. So in here I can set, we trust them, and then I can just set it to a value and set it to no to start with, so because that's like the default value. 
like this. And so now it, it can set that. Actually, I will add one more thing. Since if it is been set by manually done in the UI, then we shouldn't update those as well. So then I just go back to the query here and say, add another condition to say that uh, the, the we trust them are null. So only do it those where it's empty. Currently, it will be the same records because I haven't added the data manually. So we go back to um, the query and we see here we got 17 records. We have the update of these. And then which will we update when we actually go to the big button in the lower right side? That is those that are selected right now. So if I do a select all, it will done it to all of them. But usually, I mean, since we're doing this, I want to start testing a bit. Just take only the third first, just to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Since when you actually do it, and there are, there are a lot of settings here, let's just not do it here. This, what I think is most important is this one. So when we're updating a lot of records, which is usually what we're doing, then we can set it to 50, 100 or so. So it will try to do that in the bulk instead. This time I'll just, uh, let me just do one. So when I do this, you get a warning here that make sure that when you click on it, it will update and with you, there's no go back or roll back or so on. Just make sure. So let's do that. It will start to processing. It did three of those. And now we only have 14 records here. Since the query we made in the Fetch XML Builder was a bit smarter so that only show those where it's not set either. Okay, that's one example. Uh, let me go to another example and see what we have. I've created another new field on the contact because they have, they have these standard fields that said, do not allow emails, for example. And then I've added that, but that's just a bool. So we cannot do, sort of do anything more about it. So I create another one, do not email unless point, 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 dot, dot, dot. And it's a choice. So we have like three different options there. So let me go back here and let me do like almost the same thing. Just get it from the contact and like the active contacts. So we get these. We cannot say just those fields that I want to look at. And why do we want to do this? Well, it's like when you created a new record, they're all null. And now you have different, if I allow you to email me or not, and to keep that data, but sort of migrate the data from the old field to the new field. So let me go to the Fetch XML Builder to add those fields as well. So add and just sort of do not emails. That's the old one. And the other one is, let's start the same way. Do not unless like this and just execute it. We see, well, there are those old, the old version of the, of the column. And this is new one, null on, every, on everything here. Go back to Fetch XML Builder and you know, to bulk data updater and we see all these uh, old ones and we go, want to get them, uh, add them to uh, sort of migrate it to the new field. So let me just add it and it will say that um, unless, and we can set it, there has three different options. Okay to email me, email me if important uh, and also never email me. But if, can, if I do this, just set it, then I can have to sort of, okay, do this only for those who have the old value allow and, uh, and then run it again for those who say do not allow and set uh, never email me. But instead, I want to actually, well, look at the existing data you actually you already have and see how we can create that. Now it's getting a bit more advanced, but let me just do a short example of how to do this. And I actually have this is pre pre prepared that I will do just a bit loggy or say logic thing here. If do not email value of that is equal to true, then return a three. Otherwise, then return a one. What does that mean? Well, you will see. So I it was integrated with this tool as well from Bulk Data Update, and I sent it back to there, 
and then we see that okay on this record i'm currently on uh the value will be one w one which means it's okay to email me do like this and let me just do a short example just select those and then update those and we can actually do this as well do 50 every time well currently it's only six record six selected but let's do it and execute that so it will now calculate for every record if it will show look at what is the current value of the do not email email <laughs> allow email and to select if we should set it to yes it's okay or no it's not okay to email me and do it and it will update it and we can see here for these first six are updated so we say allow means okay to email me for do not allow never email email me so now we have migrated from the old data to the new data and i think this is to me it's very important it's the best way to using this and actually when we think okay this the test I did with the first six, let me just do select all and just do it. And let's see how it works. Okay, in this case, my small environment, I only have 33 content, but now it's set on everything. It's also like when it's still null for the new um, columns, that could break up uh, like, um, Power BI and so on, when depending on how you're writing your queries. If you want to check that, oh, get these where it's not, uh, do not email me. Well, then if it's null, what is that? How do you, is that true or not false? So this is why when you have added new fields and when you want to sort of giving it the default or calculate how to actually set the, the initial value, use this to make sure that it has some value instead of being null. And I guess that's my demo. Uh, I hope uh, you understand what I'm talking about, um, Ambish. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful tool. I must say, like, uh, it's not only for the end users, like when we go for the large deployment for the customer and so on, but it's also very important when we do the development and the testing also, because very often we have to change and update the values, and then it doesn't make sense to go to the Dataverse or the Canvas app or the model driven app, then make all of the changes manually. So I'm I'm really good fan of this tool. Like it's and the main and very important part about uh, how it is integrated with the fetch XML builder. Yeah. So it's it's look like I, a single tool, but actually it's a two tools, but it doesn't yeah, give exactly. a look and, and just a teaser uh, for another episode is that this tool that was actually calculating the value, you can use as there's a, a random feature there. So, which yeah. means when I want to have a test data, sort of update a million records, do that, send some random email address or so on. And that that's great to have. Exactly. And uh, yeah, again, thank you so much, Jonas, for the wonderful demo. And I would request to the audience to please subscribe to the channels, like and share the video within the community. Also provide your feedback in the comment section that how do you like the episode, what episode you would like to cover is next. Till that, have a great time and happy learning. Thank you so much. Take care.